بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد ونسلو علی رسول نبی الحبیب الکریم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا نبينا شفينا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا نبينا شفينا محمد وبارك وسلم ويلكم تو دی انٹرنیشنل صوفی سینٹر وی ہیو ناؤ کمنس دی سیشنز on various topics of Sufism. In the last session, I spoke about love, beauty and truth and also drew your attention to the services of International Sufi Center for the last 11 years. I informed you about the 133 monthly meets at Darus Salaam, Queens Road, Bangalore of Ulma and Sufis and its recording having been uploaded on our site www.internationalsufiscenter.org I also informed you about our 4 monthly Sufi journal Sufi World in English and Anwar e Sufiya in Urdu which has also been uploaded on the site besides several works in English which has been uploaded. My articles, interviews and speeches have also been un- uploaded on the site and the same has also been uploaded on <coughs> www SLPiran YouTube. I request all of you present to hear my earlier lectures and interviews so that much information which has been which has been gathered and stated in our talks and interviews are benefited to the listeners. Today I am going to speak to you about how to achieve happiness in life through repentance that is Toba. The Toba is seeking pardon from the Lord for all that we might have done which has displeased the Lord and the Prophet and from all the divine injunctions which has been ordered to the mankind. Man has been blessed with intelligence with rational thinking, inquisitiveness and has been always in search of truth. He has enlightened his life with the sayings of all the great men who have come to this world in the form of Nabis, Paghambars, Prophets, Avliyas, Saints and good people who are referred to as Salihins, Muttakhins, Shakirins, Sajidins and many such titles in our Holy Quran. Every one of us, irrespective of the personal faith we profess and daily practices we do, are fully aware that our actions bring results either in the way of success or failure. When we fail, we look back to find out its causes. If there is time still left to undo the wrong, we change our course and bring a new lease to the work in hand. When we always repent, for the wrong done to our friend or hurt caused to anyone, 
we wish to seek forgiveness and for that movement not to reappear but such movements to dawn on us it would it should create cheer and happiness we want to lead a happy life but our inner soul which gets corroded by our desires by our lust for our with our selfishness always makes us go beyond the limits we get angry and we let our tongue lash severely causing severe wounds that would lo- lose our dear and near ones in injury or in hurt we always think that we should go back to that moment when the greed overtook us and we succumbed and betrayed the trust and tricked our friend we always want to erase the blot in the soul in a flash of fleeting moments in a second before a flicker of a eyelid we take a decision in impulse and it is delivered which leaves others hurt and also leaves ourselves in a stupor and leaves us in a moment of regret for life long we feel that that moment should not have come to us and we should not have done the wrong but often it so happens in life there is that there is no way to go back to amend the wrong on our introspection we learn a lesson and would attempt to avoid the same pitfall in course of our life but human memory is short and we tend to forget such events and again fall in the trap if the downward trend is severe and bring a complete breakdown of our affairs we turn to people of wisdom more matured and experienced and successful ones for advice be it sages saints doctors teachers malvis amils alims astrologers friends and good samaritans it is then we realize that we have all along lived in illusions and myths created by ourselves and it is too late to take a right about turn to make a fresh beginning as time has flown and we do not return we find that much of our rage has passed and there is no resources or money or means left to achieve the goals life becomes listless morose and meaningless there are people who follow their own waywardness they are following their desires unhealthy ones or healthy ones they follow their lust they are triggered to anger in a moment when their lust and desires are not fulfilled the greed overtakes them so also their own selfish motives without any concern for others oblivious of the hurt harm and dangers caused by them to others and the immense damage that would be caused to the society at large in case they are booked by law for punishment such wrong doers go all out to corrupt the law enforcement authorities to escape from its rigor and vigor we are aware that love for money and pleasure make law enforcing authorities to escape from its so we are aware that the love for money and pleasure make the law enforcing bodies to fall prey and victim to such temptations thus the society as a whole 
finds itself in quagmire situation. The chart of society would appear like a snake and ladder for people. Everyone begins to think of shortcuts to success. In a capitalist society, the main motive for entrepreneurs is to make money and more profits irrespective of the means they adopt. Often adopting to cheating, deception, fraud, suppression of truth, misrepresentation to dupe the customers. Many means are adopted to overcome competition. In such consumer societies and democratic societies, electing representatives to the government bodies is a costly affair and the whole process appears to be against morals, fair play and good conscience. We are aware of the several scams and multi-scams which are taking place every day and how it has become very difficult for common man or a middle class family or those who are righteous to follow the right path. They need to spend millions of rupees for the education of children and this being a great burden on them, look for shortcut means to earn money by fair or foul means. In socialistic and communistic countries, there is no accountability as we all have seen in our life and, lack of, and there is lack of entrep- entrepreneurship, enterprise and competition. A donkey and a racehorse are the same. The growth and talent are victims. A heavy hand rules. So also in an autocratic setup and in a dictatorship where whims and fancies of a dictator reigns. Therefore, the God in His mercy has been sending several divine people great souls who have brought revolution in the world, whether in the modern setup or in the ancient times. We have always remembered them as saints, sages, as prophets and nabis. Our Islam is a succession of Abrahamic religions. It is a succession to the religion of Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Musa alayhi salam and Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. They were earlier books of Zabur, Injil and Taurat. In all these divine books, divine law has been promulgated and the man has been shown a way to follow the path so that his life is happy and he leads a good life, a life of goodness a life of charity, a life of prayers, a life which does not disturb him and does not take the whole society into a situation and the society itself drowns in the ocean of pathos and grief. Therefore, we found, we have, our belief is that Islam is a natural religion and it is based on rule of law. And, it, the, and the rulings are all as per the natural events and nature of human beings. It regulates human thoughts, emotions and it keeps the followers and believers in tune with the nature and the sunnah of God, sunnah of Allah. The life of our holy prophet is an example. He did what he said. He performed all the deeds in righteousness and showed the humanity to achieve brotherhood, peace, love and beauty. The foremost aspect of Islam is to surrender to the will of the Lord, the Lord of mercy, the Lord of forgiveness, the Lord of compassion, the Lord of relenting and several other attributes of Allah that govern us 
and uh, all those laws and the features of the Allah in our in our self is for our own obedience, for our own peace, and for our own goodness. Man has to turn to Lord and Lord alone during all times of adversity, during the times of goodness, during time of abundance, and he has, and that and that alone will give him peace and happiness. The happiness not only in this world, but as per the belief that we have to return to the Lord to account for all that we have done in our life. Our actions are accounted. Our actions are all recorded. And we are questioned on the day of judgment to account for what good we have done in the life. We are given the award according to the deeds we have done in this world and the life hereafter will be a life of bliss, a life of tranquility, a life with the Lord Himself. If you have surrendered to the Lord and His Prophet and carried on the life in all righteousness, goodness and in charity. The law has shown us as to what is satanic and evil thoughts which cause destruction, embarrassment, humiliation and suffering. The Lord of the mercy whom we call as Allah or we call him as a Ishwar or we call him as Devaru or Deva. He guides humanity in all aspects of the life, be it personal, be whether it is one of society or of state matters. He has given us the, the book and the life of the Prophet for guidance. In His mercy, He has sent down the light of wisdom and learning. The thousands and thousands of Prophets have come to this world with their purity of mind, heart and soul. They have brought the light from the heavens for the man to follow. Those who have followed the path have gained wisdom. They have gained knowledge and the humanity has moved forward from the times of Stone Age, from the times of Copper Age, from the times of the Iron Age to our present Nuclear Age. Though we have progressed in our life enormously and our life has become very wonderful with several inventions, with electricity brought to our house with the flick of the button, with sanitation, with improvements in our health and with all the good things in our life. Yet we are not happy as the evil has also taken its fold. Evil has also triumphed and the man has entered, in, has entered a period of desire, a period of sorrow, a period of conflict, a period of terrorism a period of abundance in one side taking over the life of poor people. The poor people are left askans. They look for wonders to happen. They want that the rich and the, and the multi-rich and the billionaires come to the rescue, give them the food and the necessities of life. They expect that, that they are not exploited and at least they get the two morsels of food clothing and shelter, but it has been only a dream. The reason for this is, all the multi-million rich countries would look for more wealth and more wealth, and the wealth, and the wealth is put for space discovery, for all the wealth to be again mined from the earth, then to spend on the humanity, then to spend on the goodness of the people. This big wrong has led to the people to commit more and more wrongs in their own way. The law enforcing authorities are themselves corrupt. It is like a fence, fence eating the crop. There is damage done to the every institution in, uh, in the country and in the world. The people who claim themselves to be the most purest and peace-loving have themselves taken to war and terrorism. Therefore, 
a time has come when should we are required to do introspection individually collectively and so that we can achieve the much sought after peace and tranquility and bliss in our own personal lives what does allah and his the lord of the mercy the lord of everyone who are around us he is not lord of one set of people alone but he is the creator of everything which is in this universe he knows us he has given us the way he was asked the believers to do good things and to fa- and to reject all false ideologies false mythologies false desires and false lust of their own making the lord only wants us to lead a good life and a pure life and protect the environment and the animals and the people so that everyone lives in peace and everyone gets the due share in the wealth of the nations in the wealth of the environment in the wealth of the world and the earth the earth is for all it cannot be dominated by a few multinational companies or the wealthy rich but the wealth has to be distributed for all either it is oil producing countries or the countries who mine diamonds jewels and gold and other precious stones the wealth belongs to the whole world the forests are required to be protected more and more trees are required to be grow, grown the global warming has to be brought down the spread of virus the spread of aids the spread of hepatitis and the spread of various deadly diseases have to be controlled the genetic engineering to change the genes and the species which the nature has bestowed which the nature has to be created has to be controlled and all that is destructive has to give way to all that is creative and inquisitive the art poetry literature has to grow and the lewdness the nudeness the e- evil among men and women have to get reduced and has to be controlled and it has to give way to all virtue and goodness and peace in the world the lord has shown the right and the wrong path and revealed to mankind to follow the right path and the path that leads to goodness heaven and eternal peace both in this world and the world hereafter thus we have to realize in our lives that practice of good brings us joy and happiness and living a wayward and sinful life brings unhappiness humiliation and suffering how does repentance happen what is repentance repentance is to give up the waywardness in our behavior to shun evil and return to the commands of the divine law to the law of the nature to the law of the prophet and the law of the lord the toba or the re- re- repentance represents at its most primary level and a fundamental level and abandon and abandonment of sin and reorientation to a life of obedience and faith and labor one should become aware of the existence of the sin for that one should know oneself one should not remain in ignorance totally oblivious of what he is doing for that one has to gain knowledge and this knowledge is known as the wisdom the wisdom is higher than the mere accumulation of information through gadgets and and informatics wisdom is light when one is aware of the light and knowledge then a person discovers his own self the discovery of own self leads to discovery of the greater self that will lead to righteousness the lord assures again and again of forgiveness only through forgiveness we can avoid the wrath of the nature the wrath of the nature is terrible it can be through the evil minded people developing such type of weapons which will be a cause of destruction for the whole humanity 
the millions of innocent people poor people depressed people backward people will wither away and the rich can do nothing without the help and assistance of the poor people it is the poor people who gather the fruits of nature who work with their hands for all the good in the world the rich and the multiple rich should not indulge in sin should not commit sin but that but should create charity institutions of charity we are examples of great men who have rendered great works of charity we have seen in the recent times that mother teresa ratan singh tata azim prem ji and all such type of great men rich wealthy people have put all their money for the charity of the good people by opening hospitals and schools and educational institutions satya sai baba was a devoted person millions of people turned towards him for faith and love and beauty and truth the millions of rupees which he gathered from the poor people for the people from the people he used for the welfare and of the mankind he opened hospitals charitable trusts schools and colleges and worked for betterment of people his works brought cheer to the poor suffering people who did not get a bucket of water the villages were and were supplied with water and with great works we need such great people in this world who can open the doors of the heart to light and wisdom therefore realization of one self and one's wrongs and one self pass our own self which is which is a self of wickedness aggression of a wrong has to be realized and we have to choose a path of obedience to the law we have to be truthful to ourselves and to our family and to our to our community and to the whole nation this has been the message of the lord again and again in all the holy books the whole all the holy books ask the man to stop erring and to turn toward lord at all the times of the day and night to remember him in morning afternoon late evening dusk fall and in the night to observe fast and to give charity and to turn towards him truly in submission and in faith it we have to praise the lord and seek his grace and forgiveness so that the nature does not turn truant and that we are not destroyed man basically intrinsically is upright by nature but the wrongs he devil develops himself in him and the devil in him the devil nature in him is the one which turns him away from the way of the lord sin is a breach of moral conduct moral norms when a man commits an indecent act it is to god we have to turn to to seek forgiveness sin takes away from the path of the lord and from the goodness and 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 from the path of righteousness from the path of charity and sinning man turns away from the lord the merciful therefore we need to change ourselves in the mind and heart the change in the mind and heart and the oath we take of obedience that we will not commit any wrong that will always be kind and good to one and all is the repentance it have to repent we have to be humble we have to be sincere and we have to be good all the time and promise ourselves to be in the company of all those people who commit good who do good acts and who do not commit any sin a sinful person should feel remorse and take steps to correct himself if the time has been lost he should always remain in pure state till his end comes to him sin is an inner process of disease and decay eventually if sin is left unchecked the erosion of basic belief will lead to spiritual death and loss of heart 
he one loses the heart of co uh, of course then salvation does not reach him the we have to adopt all those methods by which we can lift the curtains of our heart only then the secret knowledge will dawn on us it is only by polishing the heart the mirror of the heart that and we have to wipe all that is accumulated as a dust or crust in the heart which has which would which gathered from time on time we are born we are uh, we live a unchecked life we live a impure life we have to only keep polishing the heart to remove all that is unclean after the cleaning of the heart the lime of life lamp of wisdom is lit in itself when the divine light is lit in the heart it is then that the guidance from the lord dawns on a person and the pathways of life gets lit and the way to lead a happy joyful and tranquil life is shown to a person the dark skies of unconsciousness will be lit by divine presence and the peace and beauty of full moon will rise from the horizon shedding light upon light and enlightening the consciousness by dispersing the darkness of heedlessness negligence waywardness ill will and other despicable and negative traits of man to achieve peace happiness and tranquility in life then one has to seek pardon from lord from the waywardness of dark soul and seek light from the lord seeking forgiveness from lord and from those to whom you have wrong is important and imperative if not by words from the, from those from, from those whom you have wrong at least by your actions by good conduct and behavior and by acts of charity and goodness you can bring a change in yourself and and you can notice that the change taking place all over around you and you begin to shed life light and the light will 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 be flow from your mind and heart there are 16 advantages one can find on turning your mind and soul to a right of to a to a path of goodness to a path of obedience to the path of wisdom and knowledge they are one light from lord enlightens the pathways of life two you are seeking wisdom and knowledge not only for guidance but also to protect yourself from evil and wrong being done to you three you are seeking peace happiness and tranquility in life four you are adjusting and compromising with the difficult situations and worse situations in life so that you can save yourself from drowning in the ocean of life five you become trusty for goodness and the cream of charity flow flows from your hand for the well being of your near and dear ones you are considered as a trustworthy person and people of richness people who are having wealth with interest money as a, to you as a trusty so that you can perform the act of goodness the justice will prepare will flow in the world there will be more just people than people who do wrongs see sixth one your inner eye opens and you develop insight that is known as firasa this will help you to follow truth and reach ultimate reality which everyone is seeking for seven one who knows himself you know his lord eight you will begin to know your inherent strength and weaknesses nine you will begin to realize the attributes of lord and the mysteries of the nature then you will be spiritually elevated and save yourself from the mischief of men and devil 11 you will become most humble and thus sublimity simplicity and sincerity will emanate from yourself 12 
you would become truthful prayerful and also will be on the right path supporting and guiding truth loving good people in the world the goodness will enlarge itself and the goodness will spread and the evil will get subdued 13 by seeking repentance you you are becoming truthful you are giving up being hypocrite you would become straight forward and deal with the affairs of the world in a lawful way without injuring yourself or injuring injuring anyone 14 you save your soul and from the torture of the world your acts will be as per law and your and you would become a lawful citizen saving yourself from police courts advocates and from being jailed and from receiving punitive punishments 15 by living a satvik life a satvik life and adopting healthy living with performance of prayers namaz charity fasting doing yoga you maintain your health you eat clean things halal things and that saves your body and soul thus saving yourself from diseases and spending huge money on doctors and hospitals the filthy desires in your mind and heart the lewd desires for nudity and for dance and mirth and pleasures they will all evaporate and the heart and mind becomes free from worldly passions and ego therefore the feeling that you are always on the right will lead you to the feeling of ego and ego is bad for your mind and soul you have to remain humble so that you are not caught in the clutches of the law and you are troubled and uh, troubled again and again either in your personal life or in the service or in the duties you perform in the state or in the movements you have in the world therefore an illumined soul always finds a new experience a fresh breath a new life a new lease and illumined soul bring a change in the mind a change of heart it will bring a discovery for better living a good living a healthy living you will have a illumined soul it brings in new learning new growing an expansion of vision a new light there will be a glow within a new consciousness that consciousness will be ever forgiving and the, the heart and mind will glow and you either you are a humble person you are a rich person you are a poor person you are a teacher you are a doctor you are a engineer you are a poet whatever you are whatever avocation you may carry in the world as a farmer or a self employed person or as a technician your soul will glow and you will be considered as a wise man a better man a good man so repentance have to be sought day in and day in and day out so that the evil in you does not take over the the satan or the devil or the devva or the shaitan does not mead, mislead you and you you are saved from the mis, mis, misgivings which you have in yourself and you live a pure and a good life sufism teaches one to live a pure life it is part and parcel of islam in islam there is a political face there is a social face there is a historical face but the sufis have kept themselves away from all the social and political aspects they live in the world but they live above all that like a lotus they float above the water and they beckon the humanity to peace and humble living a good living a charitable living a healthy living sufis are enlightened persons they are not the persons who are recluse or go away from the responsibilities and duties as is alleged against them they are 
today in the world in the middle east countries they are harassed and they are put to great difficulties and turmoils their love their music the love of music the love of good living is not accepted by the rich and the multi rich of the middle east countries because the sufi stand for justice for love for mercy for good living and a good state of mind so our international sufi center has been working to revive all that is good in this country the sufis are spread throughout this length and breadth of the country their mausoleums are a sanctuary of peace and they beckon people to join hand in hand irrespective of caste creed or color all religions are equal and we follow secularism and secular forces in this country has to be strengthened the humanitarian activities have to be strengthened the life of a common man a poor man a man in a village has to be made peaceful humble and and he should be made to live in peace with all that is required to be good living has to be provided to him the sufis have been working and will work to follow the dictates of the law of the dictates of the allah and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to carry ill will against the prophet to carry ill will against allah to carry ill will against the sufis is like carrying ill will against humanity all humanity all the people of humanity are one and all should live in peace and happiness i thank you again for having come to this session and i pray that lord will enlighten our heart and we will re- release ourselves from the clutches of selfishness self centeredness and we evolve ourselves into a good human being into a good spiritual being and god should raise our spiritual stations it is not just material wealth it is not just material living which is important for us besides giving good education for our children besides having all the necessary things to keep our life happy we should also acquire spiritual knowledge enlighten ourselves and live a good satvik pure humble life thank you for your attendance and for having come to receive these lectures thank you very much thank you very much again